faith. By definition, it's something that is felt with strong conviction without tangible evidence of its existence. Many claim to have it, but how do we attain it? It can't be held. It can't be sold. But it can be passed down. Faith is invaluable to those who feel it. How is it that this belief can unite us regardless of our differences? It's because of conviction, that feeling inside that links so many, from the far corners of the earth to the closest reaches of our neighborhoods. Faith is all around us. Faith springs from a glorious past forward to a promising future. The faith that those who not so quietly defeated rivals and redefined record books would inspire their brethren of today to reach such epic accomplishments. And all along, there are those who cheer. In their minds, they envision. In their hearts, they believe. And because of that, they are simply known as the faithful. I remember being on the red carpet. We premiered the movie for American Hustle in New York. And it was an important game. I believe it was against Seattle. Upset that I couldn't go to the game, but I had it on my iPad. And I'm on the red carpet, supposed to be working, taking pictures, uh, promoting this movie, talking about a movie. I'm like, I don't want to talk about it. You got other people to talk about. I got this game I got to watch. It's the last five minutes. Meet Jeremy Renner, born in Modesto, California. He is as faithful as they come. At times, maybe too faithful. His passion for the 49ers, like the passion he exudes on acting, leaps off the screen at viewers. But before the bright lights and Hollywood accolades, Jeremy was merely one of the many millions who loved the team, and his fandom grew in a familiar way, in a golden time. 79, 80s, when I really started watching a lot of football, then it happened to be a really good time because that's when we started doing very, very well. And my dad wasn't really into football. He was too busy working. My mom was into sports, but again, she was too busy working. But my stepdad, he was the one that um, played sports with us. And we were all very athletic growing up, and he was a big, big, big Niner fan. And he's the one that really kind of shoved me in that direction. And obviously being you know close to the Bay, it's that there would be obviously our football team. And so then, you know, Montana was on the team. It just it crushed, and it's, you know, it was amazing. Here's Montana throwing toward the end zone, part of the run by Cooper. He's got it. He's in the end zone. A fourth down. This is the throw, Montana. Steps up, throws. Tries to get it out of the It was all the guys in the 80s that I really sort of dug into that you know, sunk my claws into the NFL post pattern to rice it's like i feel like that happened every game <laughs> it's like how is that always open did they have picked this up yet how is he always open it was pretty easy to love a team at that time that was doing very well it wouldn't be long before jeremy would do just as well this Bear High School graduate attended Modesto Junior College, where he was bitten by the acting bug. Over the course of his career, this star rose to great heights and continues to do so. From humble beginnings, he worked, honed his craft, and is featured in blockbuster films such as The Hurt Locker, The Town, The Avengers, and the critically acclaimed American Hustle. Jeremy's fame has made him a household name. And although he can be seen on the covers of countless magazines and silver screens, he is still the same guy who grew up a Bay Area native and a true faithful to his 49ers. We went to the NFL Honors a couple years ago, at the Super Bowl in New Orleans. We went down there, and it's literally like we're sitting next to the Manning brothers. There's Joe Montana, there's Jerry Rice, there's Steve Young. You can't turn without seeing a football great. You know, I'm like, dude, there's Joe Montana, and Jerry like literally is like, I don't know if I can go up and talk to him. So I'm sure Joe Montana was like, oh, who's that actor? He probably is trying to big time me. It's like, no, dude, the, the actor was like staring at you like, I'm in the tunnel, I'm six years old, and I want this guy's autograph. I turned into like a little kid. I met Montana, and I was like, I couldn't say anything to him. He's like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, hi. <laughs> I mean, it was the silliest thing. I love 
that I have that experience. I feel like a lot of people get that, and because of what I do, I feel like that gets ripped from me a lot. I don't get starstruck, or I don't get to have that a lot of times. But when it comes to sports figures, especially like guys I grew up with, I feel like I know they were on my TV every Sunday. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling to have. And uh, I, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I have that. Jeremy's one of the most accessible, down-to-earth, you know, approachable guys ever. I mean, he's a guy who comes from humble beginnings, so he's just as interested in talking to the janitor or the craft surface guy as he would be talking to a movie star. Very down-to-earth, very accessible, and I think sometimes people, because of the persona he plays, I think sometimes people think he's a little more standoffish than he is, but he's really a down-to-earth, kind of salt-of-the-earth guy. I still have a, a house in Modesto, and I, my father lives across the street, and my mom lives there. And, um, it's a, it means a lot to me. It's home, always will be. Coming up on The Faithful, Jeremy shares his love for the red and gold and brings his talents to Levi Stadium to help christen the next chapter in the franchise's history. For me, I, I can't talk about how other fans are. All I know is I am, I am I'm terribly loud. I'm terribly offensive to not anybody in particular, to just I have the Tourette's and I just scream, it's wrong. I don't feel proud, but um, <laughs> I can only speak to my sort of fandom and nerdiness and geek out on, um, on the gladiators on the field, man. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. You've seen him on the screen. You may even feel like you know him from his roles that have garnered him two Academy Award nominations. Surprisingly, though, Jeremy Renner is a normal, unbalanced, insane faithful, just like you. Jeremy never misses a game and often has to go through great lengths to get a glimpse of the team he calls his own. Uh, gosh, I've, I've been in really dark, dark areas where I, I, I literally just had to do highlights where I had someone FaceTime the game, and I had to watch it on FaceTime on my phone. I've done that. Sometimes I'd have to record it and just turn off my phone so no alerts came up. Nowadays, you know, you have apps all these things, so I have to turn all my phone off, and sometimes a week would go by. If I'm in the Middle East or if I'm in whatever country I'm in, sometimes it's hard to get the you know, sling box, wherever I can, to, to try to watch it. Um, I don't like watching things recorded because then I have to be a hermit from the world. By any means necessary, that's the way Jeremy Renner consumes his 49ers. But FaceTiming a screen from a remote location or DVRing the game shutting himself off from the world doesn't rank as the most interesting place he's viewed a game. Well, Jeremy's on the red carpet for American Hustle, which is a movie that was, you know, nominated for Academy Awards and it was sort of a big to-do, this premiere, and it's supposed to be something where uh, he's going down the red carpet talking to reporters. And as he was going down the red carpet, he was actually on his iPad watching the 49er game because he was more interested in that. So it made a lot of news feeds that, you know, he was actually on the red carpet watching football instead of <laughs> doing his job, but that's how it works. If anybody saw what I was really doing, it's like, what is this guy literally watching the 49er game on his iPad? And like, people are like taking pictures, like, get out of here. So, that, you know, it's pretty important to me. Pretty important to me. Just as the team means the world to Jeremy, it was pretty important for the 49ers to do something meaningful for the faithful. Something that would be indelible as the team prepared for its move from Candlestick Park down the 101 to Levi Stadium. That preparation began over a year ago and it materialized in a chance encounter. About a year and a half ago, I started with the 49ers and from the very first day that I started, I was thinking about one of the biggest tasks, which was opening the stadium uh, properly and the thought process was to create uh, some epic film that would really showcase the history of the team and sort of take the team through this journey to now and I was sitting on the bus um, with my 49er Studios crew at the NFC Championship pulling into the tunnel at Seattle I thought to myself one of the people that I would be great if they could be the host of this epic film would be Jeremy Renner. I had heard that Jeremy was a huge fan and was just really into the team. And lo and behold, in front of me, about three seats on the other aisle was Jeremy Renner. We ended up talking about uh, what could happen in nine or 10 months and they were hooked. Immediately we were 
super excited about it, thought it would be a really great experience. And we started talking about it, started, you know, trying to fit in the schedule and just uh, we're really happy to be able to do it. I mean, for Jeremy, you know, he's very selective and very picky about what he does. And this is one of those things where he instantly was like, yeah, I want to do it. It was just a great feeling knowing that they were working around their schedule of shooting movies in London and doing all these amazing scripts. And they were going to find a time to come back here for the faithful and do some really cool things that we're gonna translate into this epic film uh, on the boards. And really that's how the project uh, was created. Uh, there's something historical, there's something magical about these spaces. And to see one that's actually gonna be something that you look back on and go, wow, what a legendary place where legendary games are gonna happen is pretty special. I, I just can't wait to see the, all those, those seats filled and watch a good game. Cannot wait. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful stadium. However, before the deafening roar of over 68,000 people could fill Levi Stadium and the season could get underway, there was a shoot that needed to happen. With some of the best in the movie business locking arms with the 49er Studios crew, it was time to get to work. Under the cover of darkness, the production team unloaded their gear, took the field, and set the stage. We brought in a great DP from from Los Angeles named Crash, who shot some amazing stuff. And it's just been a really a coordinated effort between the 49ers organization and our company. So it's been a great experience and we're really excited about the shoot. Well, anytime you work for the 49ers, my favorite team of all time, the pressure's on. Whatever you produce has to live up to the standards of Montana, Steve Young, Bill Walsh, George Seifert, all those greats. So this isn't a small project. This is a huge project, and to do it with Jeremy and the Niners makes it even better. The shoot just had this Hollywood feel, and then in walks Jeremy Renner with literally like the same jacket that he had in the Bourne movies and a 49ers like weathered t-shirt, and it just added so much flavor to it, and it really came together. Until I saw him walking on that field and kind of looking around at the lights and the cameras were getting set, I didn't think it was as real as it could be, but when we started to roll the cameras, that's when we knew that it was gonna be a really good piece. And here we are tonight, ready for that chapter. That was fun. Jeremy said that he was willing to do this for us and come down and be a part of uh, opening Levi's properly. I mean, we were blown away. This is a guy who, he's not just an actor, he's an actor at another level, but He's also a fan. I wanted somebody who really understood, who was from this area, who truly loved the team, enough that he was like, what, the 49ers are calling me? They, they want me to be a part of this? Well, I'll absolutely be a part of it. You could feel that he truly is faithful and they had a lot of passion for the team. It's, it's a great honor to be here and this is my hood. I mean, uh, this is where I grew up and this is my team I've been following for uh, however too many dang years. For whatever reason, if it, if it makes sense to me, man, and uh, I'm so glad to be doing it. When we return, watch the film that set the tone for a new chapter in 49ers history, as told by one of its most faithful. They know who we are. There are millions of you. They don't call us fans, bandwagoners. They definitely don't call us a nation. They know our name. They know what we're about. We're the 49ers faithful. And we've been doing this for years. Longtime faithful Jeremy Renner grew up in the Bay Area, and although his career has taken him across the globe, his love for a place he calls home remains. In 2014, he returned to the Bay to put a signature stamp on the grand opening of Levi Stadium, forever linking himself with the 49ers and the millions that bleed red and gold. There are millions of them. They don't call us fans, bandwagoners. They definitely don't call us a nation. They know our name. They know what we're about. We're the 49ers faithful. And we've been doing this for years. for this football team 
It started back in the 1940s. Your grandparents can tell you about it, and chances are they already have. Well, the story goes a little something like this. 68 years ago, two ambitious brothers made this a reality when they opened up shop in San Francisco's North Beach District. And they worked their tails off to create the city's first professional football team. Their vision spawned the faithful movement. The faith in this team began with the likes of the million dollar backfield, Leo the Lion, and the revolutionary alley-oop connection of Tittle to Owen. Those men strapped on leather helmets and sparked the imagination in the Bay Area. Their legacies will never be forgotten. Before this team ever became championship caliber, we were there. Faith led us to this team. Some doubted, though. They doubted that a team run by a young man from Youngstown, Ohio, could break through in Northern California. We didn't question. We had faith. And I'm so proud, and I don't think that anything could top this. Yes! After planting the flag at Candlestick, the 49ers hoisted five trophies. Five. We watched the best players in the NFL earn their way to the Hall of Fame. And we also saw the doubters fade. But all the while, the 49ers faithful remain. Names, faces, coaches, players, they all change. But our faith never wavers. We don't want to be great, but we expect it. We want NFL history to be written and our players and coaches to be the authors of those chapters. Let's all come together and let's unite. Our faith made us fall in love with the colors of red and gold. Our faith became a reality when a catch became a sports highlight for the rest of eternity. Caught by Clark. Our faith was strengthened when one drive culminated into a world championship. Our faith was never empty. We had enough servings of rice to last a lifetime. We all know the names on the back of the jerseys and the coaches and their signature wardrobe. We carry these memories like a walking Niner almond. We know, if we could, that we would strap on a helmet and play just one down for a team that we have loved and prayed and worked so hard to be a part of. As the torch is passed down the line and leadership changed, the goal never did nor does the desire to write a new chapter for our beloved 49ers and raise a sterling silver trophy above our heads once again. So here we are tonight, <laughs> ready for that chapter. As the lights go down in the city, they do so reflecting incredible moments in recent history where tears were shed and blood was bled, where warriors rocked the very foundation of Candlestick. And how fitting that just recently, those warriors not only ran into the end zone in the history books one final time, closing a chapter, only to open another. The 49ers pick it! Navarro Bowman running it all the way for the touchdown! Upon opening a new chapter, they, in essence, opened the doors to this. This won't be a stadium for the wave or for Fairweather fans who just bought their jerseys last week, no. This is our new home. It's where the faith never ends. It's where history will be remembered, celebrated, where it will be bottled and then uncorked every game day. This will be the hallowed place where the ghosts of the past connect with the united heartbeat of everyone in these seats tonight to create an environment, an advantage, that makes it difficult for even the most mighty of opposition to overcome. So look around, our heroes are everywhere. They're next to you. They're on the field. They're looking down on us. But as important as the greatest names to grace this team have been, it is the faithful that make the 49ers what they are. The faithful prepare the team for battle. They set the tone for every season, for every game, and for each and every snap.
I've never given birth to a child, but every game to me is like four quarters of, of pushing and grunting and, and hating and cursing. And so I just feel like I'm glad it's over. No matter win or lose, it's like, ah, all right, yes! It's a painful, painful experience for me. So I, I, can't, I don't like to sit down, I don't like to be with the guys and grab a beer and watch the game. No, no, I gotta be up or I have to pace and I have to uh, concentrate and focus. When your team loses and it ruins your week, it stops your life, it's not a good thing. Literally, I wouldn't speak to anybody for a week. I was so like very hurt and upset. Now, if that's faithful or just psycho, I don't know. But yeah, you know, I don't do well. It, it, yeah, I, I, I still have problems. I got problems. <laughs>